ESAC is the Deep Space Atomic Clock. It's a, a space atomic clock. It uses technology that exists on the ground today in our ground tracking stations. Those atomic clocks are kind of refrigerator sized, just not suitable for space flight. This clock, much smaller, keeps the same kind of accuracy and stability as ground clocks and enable, enables us to do uh, space tracking in a very different way than we traditionally do it. Um, essentially, it allows us to uh, take what is now a two-way exercise where signals go up from the Earth, do the spacecraft and come back down, allows us to either track on board the spacecraft or uh, send from the spacecraft down to the Earth uh, with a one-way link. And that enables a lot of things for us. One is that measurement can be much more accurate than the two-way measurement. Um, so that improves our overall navigation. It also uses, uh, uses the tracking networks much more efficiently so we can get more data. Um, there are other applications for it. It uh, helps with uh, any endeavor that uses radio signals for science, like gravity science or atmospheric science of planets. And then here near at Earth, space clocks are fundamental to things like the GPS system. Without them, we wouldn't have GPS. And so uh, our clock, DSAC, is um, about an order of magnitude more accurate and stable than the existing GPS-based clocks. It's been an exciting year. Um, we've made a lot of progress with the design and uh, detailed development of the clock. Uh, we went through some critical design reviews and uh, we're pressing ahead with building what we call a breadboard um, that has flight components for the most part uh, kind of built in a a flat way, it's not in its flight configuration, but that allows us to really check out the clock in its end-to-end uh, -end fashion uh, to make sure that it works like we expect it to work. Uh, and in conjunction with that, we're designing and developing the, the components of the actual demonstration unit that we're going to, to put in space. How are we going to check out these functions that are ultimately usable in deep space, whether it's you know deep space navigation, um, uh, gravity science at a at a satellite like Europa, um, we're not obviously going to be able to do those things, but what's fundamental to those things is this measurement of either range or range rate between the spacecraft and the tracking source. And um, the clock plays a key role in making sure that those measurements are as precise as they can be. So in low Earth orbit, we can confirm that accuracy. And we can also do some experiments where we do navigation as if we were in deep space. Uh, one of the characteristics of deep space nav is you get tracking for a while and then you don't for many hours or maybe a day. And so what's important for the clock is that it doesn't drift away from where it needs to be in those tracking gaps. And we can obviously confirm that in low Earth orbit as well. And it's still a, a great environment to really check out uh, robust space operations. You know, there are there are effects out there, magnetics and and um, temperature effects and radiation effects, you know, it is space and it does impact the performance of the clock if we don't model or account for it carefully. The hallmark of DSAC is that uh, it doesn't drift away. For a, a typical 10-year deep space mission, uh, DSAC would either would lose or gain only about a microsecond over that 10-year lifetime. Uh, it's a very stable, accurate device.